Well, good to see everyone back out tonight. Glad that you're here. Appreciate Chip announcing that. I didn't know if you wanted to run them all off or not, if I may stay another three years or not, but uh, I guess uh, they'll, they'll deal with it. Now, I look forward to another three wonderful years. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11 and verse 12. The wise man Solomon records these words. He says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. By time and chance happen to them all. For a man also does not know his time. Like a fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So that the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. If you remember Jesus, when he selected the apostles, he told those that were fishermen, he said, you leave the fishing fishing and I will make you fishers of men. But I want you to know something tonight that the apostles and you and I, while we are to be fishermen for Christ, we face an enemy, the devil, who goes fishing too. And so tonight, I want to talk about the devil goes fishing. In our world today, what is the concept of Satan himself? When I say what does the devil look like? What do you think of? Do you think of the worldly image that we so frequently see? A little man in a red suit with a forked tail and a pitchfork. Is that what you see? That's what the world thinks about Satan. Because that's what the world has said Satan is like. But you and I know that Satan is not that. That Satan is a living, breathing being that is out to cause you to lose your soul. And so the devil can take the form of many different things. The devil can take the form of another human being that's working against you to cause you to lose your soul. The devil may even be you yourself because you do things that you know are contrary to the Word of God. Maybe it's your spouse. Now, not mine. She's not. She's an angel. She's not the devil. I'll definitely clarify that right now. But brother, are there some spouses who are trying to lead their spouse to hell? And so the concept and the idea of Satan can be very vast. And we need to understand that he is out and about trying to cause us to be lost. I want you to notice tonight a few things about what Satan is really like according to the scriptures. And I'm not going to turn and read all these scriptures, otherwise this lesson will be an hour and 45 minutes long. That's how much material is in this lesson. But if you're taking notes, you can write these down. And you can go home and you can see the references that I'm making. Paul says that Satan, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 down through verse 15, that Satan is an angel of light. He portrays himself to be, what? A child of God. But the scripture also says in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 that Satan has his own church. He has his own followers. Or maybe we need to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 where the Bible says that he has his own doctrines. Albeit those doctrines are contrary to the doctrine of God and the doctrine of truth, he has his own doctrines. And just as Jesus 
Just as he told his disciples to be fishers of men, as I said, Satan and his disciples are out there fishing for men. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, remember there that Peter says that we need to be sober and vigilant because we have an adversary, the devil, who is going about as a roaring lion, seeking what? Whom he may devour. And so tonight, I want to look at the concept of Satan going fishing in regards to three different areas about him. First of all, tonight, notice that he has a large fishing area. Or does he? Someone says, well, he has the largest fishing area, the world, uh, 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 fishing area known to man. It's the whole world. Is that really who he is fishing for? Satan is not worried about those who are of the world. Where is Satan fishing tonight? Satan is in this assembly, in your mind, trying to cause you to be distracted from the truth of what God's Word says. You see, Satan is not worried about those in the world because they already belong to him. He's worried about those who have proclaimed their faith and exhibited and shown their faith in God Almighty. He fishes among the righteous people. For example, go back into the Old Testament. Perhaps you remember the book of Job. The Bible said that Satan had been going to and fro. What was he going to and fro for? He was going trying to find someone to devour. And then God and, and Satan have this conversation where God says, Have you considered... My servant Job. Now I want you to think about that. Have you considered my servant Job? And remember Satan's response was, well, you've got him so protected. You have, got, you have done so much for him, he would never turn against you. So Satan steps up to the challenge to try to lead Job away. Job lost all, didn't he? He lost his family, his children. He lost his riches. He lost everything. And at one point, I suggest, even his wife was ready to turn against him when she said, curse God and die. What was Job's wife saying? She was falling prey to the fishing pole of Satan by saying, Job, it's not worth what you're going through. Just curse God and die. You see, Satan was using his wife against him. But never once in the book of Job, and maybe one of you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't ever, as I have read the entire book, see one time where Job gives in to the trap of Satan. Never once do I see that. I see him standing firm. Well, consider another example and go over to Luke chapter 22. Here in Luke chapter 22, you might remember the story of Peter. Down in verse 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you. Peter, the one who made the great confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, upon which Jesus said, I will build my church. Satan says, Peter, Satan wants you. He wants you that he may sift you as wheat. And Jesus says in verse 32, but I pray for you. I pray for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Guess what? Satan pulled Peter in, hook, line, and sinker. Because we know what Peter did. Peter denied Jesus. Did Peter come back to Jesus as Jesus prayed? Yes. You remember Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? And each time Jesus says, do you love me, what did he say? Strengthen my brethren. Satan is after the righteous. 
Satan is after those who are faithful. Satan is after those who have made a full commitment to God. He's after you. He's after me. And brethren, we must be careful. We have an example of Job who did not yield, but then we have an example of Peter, one of the closest to Jesus, who gave in. We've got to be very cautious. Well, when you keep thinking about his fishing area, we know he goes after the righteous. Mom and dad. Guess who else he's going after? Grandpa's, grandpa's. Guess who he's going after? He's going after our young people. Why is he going after our young people? He goes after them because they have yet to make a commitment. They are still weak. They lack experience of life, etc. The idea is if I get them young, I'll be able to keep them. And unfortunately, brethren, we have seen this far, far, far too many times where our young people, our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren, where they have become unfaithful because the way of the world has pulled them in and led them astray. I read a quote uh, Thursday or Friday. I can't remember what day it was. I had sleep since then. But the quote was something along this line. To have the greatest youth program a congregation can have starts at home. Wait a minute. What do you mean the greatest youth program starts at home? It is at home that they see the example mom and dad set. Look around us tonight. Look around you. Who was here this morning that is not here tonight? And I'm going to make the statement, and you can throw tomatoes, you can throw rocks at me, whatever you want, you can throw them at me. But the truth is there. If you look around this assembly tonight and you see those uncommitted Christians who were here this morning, and then they come back and say, I wonder why my child is not faithful. Why, why is my child not faithful to the church? I'll tell you why. Because you didn't set the right example for that child. That's pretty harsh, Brother Ray. Maybe harsh, but it's truth, isn't it? It's true. You see, Satan uses the tools of the world to pull our children away. The greatest responsibility, the greatest legacy you can leave your child is that you are a faithful child of God and they are still faithful to this day. How long does Satan fish? You know, it. In certain times of year, there are certain restrictions on fishing, aren't there? Satan doesn't have any restrictions. He fishes all year long. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Because he's going about, as we saw in 1 Peter chapter 5, seeking those who he might devour. Well, Brother Ray, second thought tonight. We know what his fishing area is. What about his equipment? What does he use to try to draw us in to this trap? Just as a fisherman might use a different type of, of bait to draw different types of fish, so Satan does for us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, Paul says they are devices, schemes, and designs, and there are many. And trust me, brethren, Satan knows how to use each and every one of them. When you think about the hook that he uses, the hook he uses is, unfortunately, false teachers. False teachers. He uses these false teachers to try to tell us something that is not true according to God's Word. He himself was the first known false teacher, was he not? You remember in the Garden of Eden when he said, you shall not surely die? Chip, he just changed one word. That doesn't mean a whole lot, does it? Just one word is all he changed. 
but it changed the course of humanity from being in a relationship with God to being lost. One word he used to hook Eve in with this false doctrine. And he has many false teachers today, brethren, sadly, they're in the church. We have false teachers among our brotherhood. We have false teachers, and you name the topic, and I can probably tell you someone who teaches a doctrine that is contrary to what God's Word teaches. Just this morning, I hadn't seen it for quite a while from this gentleman, but he posted an article. He has a website and a book, Who May Marry? He says anyone can be married, even that one that is divorced and is the guilty party. They can be married. No problem. He's been proven, that's been proven false time and time again. But he's confused except he wants to continue to teach false doctrine. You see, Satan uses the false teachers. Another one in this AD 70 theory. I haven't heard much from him lately. I did read the other day that this individual has now denounced the church. Because he's had so much truth taught to prove his doctrine to be false. Brother, Satan uses these teachers. He uses our companions. What does Paul say? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Evil companions corrupt good morals. He uses what he can. He uses his disciples. That's evil people recruiting others to be evil. The bait that he uses... It's a variety of baits he knows. And for each one of us that is here tonight, let us understand something. He knows exactly what bait to throw to you that will pull you away. You must be aware of the bait that he uses. You must be aware of the weakness that you have so that you can constantly be on guard so that his bait won't lure you away from the truth. Think about these types of baits. Number one, ignorance. You remember in the Old Testament, Hosea says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's ignorance. They're, they were going to be destroyed because they were ignorant. They just didn't know. Another one, laziness. I like this one. I like this one. Laziness. Always looking for the easy way. I'm going to do as little as I have to do in order to get by. My wife says I have to go home and mow the grass tonight. Guess what? I'm going to mow the grass. But I'm not going to weed eat. <laughs> Why am I? Well, she said weed eating is, is part of mowing the grass. Sam, you believe that? I thought that was two separate functions. Actually, I, I did some weed eating on Friday, so I don't have to necessarily do much weed eating today. But I'm going to go home and cut the grass. I'm going to try to find the easy way to do it. We've been provided an easy way. I remember when I was a kid, we had a little push mower that didn't have a motor on it. Maybe you've used one of those before. Yeah? And now we have one that has four wheels, a steering wheel. And it's got a motor on it. It's, it's got a motor on it, and you just sit and ride. That's the easy way to do it, right? Okay, says we don't need a riding mower at our house. Oh yeah, we have to have a riding mower. <laughs> I can get done faster because it's the easy way. That's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to find the shortcut. He wants us to try to take the easy route in order to get to heaven. I didn't know there was an easy way to get to heaven. When I look at Jesus' definition of the two roads, I see that it's easy to be lost, but it's difficult to be saved. I may have misread that passage, Chip, but I think that's what it says about the two roads. It's easy to be lost, and it's very hard because it says there are few that find the way to eternal life. Deception. How about deception? Promising something good is going to happen. <clears throat> Have any of y'all ever eaten out in a restaurant? Anybody here ever eat out at a restaurant? 
Have you ever been deceived by the advertisement that you see about that restaurant? You've been told that that's going to be the best food you ever ate only to get to where you're going and it's the biggest letdown you've ever had. Been there, done that, but I don't have a t-shirt for it. And sadly, I've done it more than once. You'd think I'd learn better, wouldn't you? <coughs> Satan promises us something that just won't be true. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. That's what he tried to do to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 4 in the recorded temptations. He tried to promise something to Jesus that was not going to happen because of Jesus already had it. Or how about the, the, the bait of neglect? He tries to get us what? To neglect the assembling of ourselves together. He tries to get us to neglect being involved in our visitation program. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 27 that pure and undefiled religion is what? To take care of the widows and to visit the afflicted. Brother, we have responsibility. What are we doing? Are we falling into this trap of letting Satan pull us away? Now is a good place to work this in. Chip, we talked about this a little bit in the business meeting. So I'm going to chase a little rabbit here. In the month of October, the third weekend, we will begin a gospel meeting with Brother Alan Hires. And I'm just going to tell you, you have a responsibility to that meeting. Brother Joe Venable is going to coordinate again a door-knocking effort. You want our meeting to be successful? You want us to reach those who are lost? Guess whose responsibility it is? Don't neglect it. But I guarantee you, as sure as I'm standing here with a yellow shirt and cheese dip on my tie, <laughs> that there's going to be some in here that will not take responsibility and they will neglect their responsibility as it relates to our gospel meeting. How about our neglect in being the example that we should? How often as parents have we neglected the being the right example for our children? How about being the right example of being a husband or a wife? Showing our children what we should be as a spouse. And I could go on and on about areas in which we can be neglectful. How about greed? Greediness can lead us astray very quickly. 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 and verse 10 speaks of riches. It doesn't say it's wrong to be rich. What it says is it's wrong to love your money more than you love the Lord. <coughs> the love of money is the root of many sins. Or how about being selfish? How about this aspect of being selfish? And that's very simply having a lack of love for someone else. You remember Jesus says, by our love they will know. Who's the they? The world will know that we are what? His disciples. When we're selfish, we don't love like we should. How about grumbling? Grumbling. Surely no one here has ever grumbled about anything. Well, I remember when I first moved here, there was a lot of grumbling going on. I think we've gotten much better about grumbling. But when we think about grumbling, brother, grumbling is a sin. What was it that caused the children of Israel to be lost? And someone says, well, Brother Ray, that was Eve and Adam. They were disobedient. What caused their disobedience? I suggest to you that grumbling had a lot to do with their disobedience. When they got to the Red Sea, what's the first thing they did? Yeah, Start yeah. complaining, grumbling about, well, you just brought us out here to die because there wasn't enough room back there for us to be buried. And then when they get out in the wilderness, they started grumbling, yeah, we're starving to death. We don't have any food. We don't have any water. 
With every instance of their grumbling, guess what God did? God met the need they had when they began to grumble. But brethren, every time God met their need, they found something else to grumble about. Satan wants us to use, wants to use grumbling to keep us divided. He wants us to be divided. Make sure I've covered everything. Talk about his fishing area, his equipment, and his bait. Yes, we've covered it all. You see, Satan's going fishing every day. Chip your songs tonight. Perfect songs. Master of the Tempest is raging and took me back almost 40 years to when I was a student at Freed Hardman, Freed Hardman College then, when Kay and I attended the small congregation refuge. We'd have singing night. We had a young man, and he wasn't the greatest of song leaders, but he led Master of Tempters of Raging every time we had singing night. And then you sang until the storm passes by. First time I ever sung that song was at a funeral of a dear, dear elder of the Lord's Church in Little Town, Kentucky. A lot of memories there. And then I was sinking deep in sin. That's Stephanie's favorite song. So you, you, you've hit some good songs tonight. And in the message of those songs is what causes us to sink? What causes the storm not to pass by? Why does the tempest keep raging? It is because we allow Satan to keep fishing in our lives and we allow him to draw us away from the truth of God's Word. You see, you and I, we can overcome and we can allow ourselves not to be caught. Let me close with two passages of Scripture. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Our brother James says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And then if I ever had to choose a favorite, I always remember 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, where our brother Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you ex except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear. How do we overcome? How can we not be lured into the fishing pole or the net of Satan? It's very simple. We allow God to be in control. Tonight, will you submit yourself to God? Will you surrender your life to His will? If you're not a member of the body of Christ, we encourage you tonight to come and put Christ on in baptism. Where your sin can be washed away and that you can begin to live a new life. But be ready. Be ready. Before the very first drop of water from the baptistry dries, Satan is already going to be trying to lure you away. Or tonight, if you put Christ on in baptism and you haven't been faithful in the way that you should, and tonight you need to come home and rededicate your life, and you need to tell Satan, I'm not, on, I'm not going to be in that bed anymore. I'm going to go back to being a faithful child of God. Tonight, you can repent of sin, make confession of those sins, let your brethren pray with you and pray for you. You know what your need is. Our prayers you come. Make your need known. Come to the front while we stand. While we stand.